In this demonstration, we are going to deploy the Theme Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure feature from the Microsoft Azure Marketplace. Note that you need to log in into the new Azure portal with the credentials for your subscription. In the Azure portal, select the plus sign in the menu on the left to deploy a new resource. Type in Veeam in the search box to view all the solutions Veeam has deployed in the Azure Marketplace. Select Veeam Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure. On the page that appears, select the Veeam Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure result. Now click on the Create button. The next page shows you more information about this feature. After you have reviewed it, click Create again to start customizing the virtual machine you are going to deploy. First you need to configure the basic settings. You need to provide a name for the virtual machine, a username and password to be able to log in, and the subscription which you want to use. Finally, you need to decide whether you're going to create a new resource group or use an already existing one. Depending on your specific needs, it might be necessary that you change the location here as well. In the next step, we need to select the virtual machine size. Depending on your selection, the monthly recurring costs can vary a lot. This is probably an important decision you need to take. Not enough resources will make the experience slow, and too many resources rather expensive. Even when you take into consideration that you can scale out, you still need to think about the Azure scale units. Step 3 will allow you to customize even further. Decisions will need to be made about storage, networking, monitoring and availability of your virtual machine. In storage you will need to choose the type of disk which will depend on the type of virtual machine you have chosen. In the networking part, I have chosen all the defaults to create new resources, but you can select already created resources or modify whatever is necessary to fit your environment. In the monitoring part, I choose to enable the diagnostics, but this is again something that you need to look at for yourself. Last but not least, you will decide about the availability of your virtual machine and choose to put it into an availability set or not. After reviewing all your selections, you can choose OK to go to the last step. In this last step, you will get the overview of the estimated pricing cost and more information on the terms of use. Finally, click on the Purchase button to start the deployment of the virtual machine. Our feature is now being deployed in Microsoft Azure. For this demonstration, we sped up this process. When the deployment is finished, you will have a new virtual machine running based on your selections with Theme Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure embedded on it. You will see the monitoring information if you have enabled that, the public IP address and much more. Note that you need to have the public IP address or the fully qualified domain name to remotely access that virtual machine through RDP. You can also click on the connect button in the menu and download an RDP file that is already pre-configured with the connection details. In this demonstration, we are going to use Veeam Fast SCP for Microsoft Azure to upload backups to Veeam Direct Restore for Microsoft Azure, which we deployed before in another demonstration. We start from the beginning, so our newly deployed virtual machine isn't added yet into the solution. Press Add Machine and the wizard will open. In this window, you will need to add the host name, which could be either an IP address or the fully qualified domain name. You also need to add the port that you're going to use to connect to the virtual machine. You can verify and view that port in the configuration for the specific virtual machine. Then you need to decide whether or not you're going to use SSL, although I would advise this strongly, and what security checks will be performed. Last but not least, you fill in the username and password for that virtual machine and press OK. Now that we have a connection to that virtual machine, we can start by uploading data to the Veeam Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure feature. In our example during the demonstrations, I'm uploading a backup of my Windows 10 machine that I want to keep running in the cloud because I have no more laptop left on premises to run it on. This is a backup taken by Veeam Endpoint Backup, but it could also be a backup taken by Veeam Backup and Replication or Veeam Backup Free Edition. On the C drive of that virtual machine, I'm going to create a new folder. Note that you can choose this location yourself. Press create folder in the ribbon and give it a name. 
right click on the empty folder and choose upload files or an entire folder or choose it from the ribbon menu. I select my specific backup files and press open. If I go now and select jobs, you will see that those files are being uploaded to the virtual machine. After some time, the upload is finished and you will be able to use those backups to do a direct restore to Microsoft Azure. In this demonstration video, we showed you how you can use a solution such as Veeam FastDCP for Microsoft Azure to upload your backup files to the Veeam Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure feature. In the next demonstration, we will show you how you can do the restore. In this demonstration, we are going to use the Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure feature to restore a backup of one of my desktops as a virtual machine into Microsoft Azure. After connecting through RDP to the virtual machine, and if necessary, start the feature with the icon on the desktop, you will receive the Veeam Recovery Appliance from Microsoft Azure window. You will notice a few options, Restore, Advanced Mode, Configuration, and How To. Let's quickly have a look at the How To. The How To opens the help page for this solution, where you can read on how the solution works, as you can see right here. Let's move on to the next step and do the configuration. Note that this only has to be done the first time and any time you want to switch or add a subscription. In the initial configuration wizard, press next on the welcome page. On the license agreement page, select I accept the terms in the license agreement and press next. On the subscription page, you're going to need to add your published settings file. As you can see, there is a URL on that page that will guide you to it where you can retrieve the specific file. Press on that URL. You will be guided to a logon screen where you have to sign in with the credentials for your specific subscription. After signing in, a download will be initiated for that published settings file. Save it somewhere on the virtual machine. Now go back to the wizard and browse to select the downloaded file and then press next. On the summary page, press finish to end the initial configuration. Now let's start a restore. Press the restore button. On the select backup file to restore window, select the file that you uploaded before as we showed in a previous demonstration. The backup file will be read to see what the contents are. After that, select the virtual machine you want to restore and press the restore button. A new wizard will open to allow you to choose all the necessary configuration for the virtual machine you're going to deploy in Microsoft Azure. First, you will notice your subscription that you added through the published settings file. Second, you will need to choose the Azure data center location where you want to deploy it. On the next page, you can choose the virtual machine size. By pressing edit, you will be able to select the correct size for your virtual machine, depending on the configuration you had before. You can also select a specific storage account if you have multiple accounts. If necessary, you can exclude disks of this virtual machine if it would have had multiple disks attached. On the cloud service page, you can make a change to the original name, including the possibility to add a prefix or a suffix. And you also need to choose in which cloud service you're going to deploy this virtual machine or even create a completely new cloud service. Note the endpoint port that you need to make a decision on to be sure you can RDP to the virtual machines afterwards. Also note that automatically we provide you with the link you need to RDP to the virtual machine after restore. On the network page, you can choose to which network you want to connect the virtual machine. This will be a configured network already existing in your Azure subscription. On the reasons page, provide a reason and press next. Finally, review your selections and go back through the wizard if necessary, or continue to start the restore. The machine is now restoring. For this demonstration, we have sped up this restore process. When the restore is done and successful, you can close this wizard and get back to our feature. Now let's have a look at my Azure subscription and see my virtual machine running. When I go to all items, I can see my virtual machine running and as you can see in my dashboard, you already see the activity.
Here you can also see more information such as the public IP in case you need it. And now I can use that information to connect to my desktop that I just restored. In this demonstration, we took a backup file that we uploaded before and restored it after the initial configuration with Veeam Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure. 